Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, April 18th meeting of the Conway Select Board, which around 6.15 or 6.30 will be a joint meeting of the Select Board, the Capital Improvement Committee, and the Finance Committee. So I call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is to vote to approve the minutes of April 10th. Look them over. They look good on yeah, like your summary of our talk about capital improvement. So I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have no warrants tonight. Select board member meetings. Chris, uh, intended the capital improvement meeting, um, transfer station form, and I completed the IT security uh, training. Okay. Assignment one, right? Yeah. Uh, but, right. The assessment. Yes. So I yes. Have, More I to come. Yeah. Did, did not. I did <laughs> not do the I three. I did not do the IT training. I didn't even do the IT training last. Um, but I I get constant daily email reminders. <laughs> Thank you, Bernard. Um, but I I also went to the transfer station forum. Um, Meetings. We did a, 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 a field trip meeting to Sue Bridges' house um, about the pollinator project from mm -hmm. two years ago, trying to resuscitate that. Um, and we've got another tomorrow. Yes. And, but basically, last week just felt like one giant long meeting. Other comment, anybody? Finish business now. Hey, Ron. Um, new business. So before we get to Nelson and Thad are on the agenda first. Before we get to that, we do an announcement. We'll just make first right off the bat. Um, we do officially have a new police chief in the town of Conway. Effective, oh, congratulations. Effective July 1st. His name is Don Bates. He's currently the sergeant for the Waitley Police Department, but Effective July 1st, his title will be Chief of Police Town of Conway, Don Beats. So that's done. Next, we'd like to welcome Nelson Shiplett, Thaddeus Bennett, to discuss annual town meeting publicity. Um, hey. hey, welcome, John. Hey. Want us to stay wherever we are? You can, you can stay where you can do it. You can move, you can sit, you can walk. You can walk. Talk loud if you're over there. What's that? You, that that that's the microphone, and right. it, it, it is ten. I just came off the river coaching, so I think I'll be able to be loud enough. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so we prepared a. Did you have the document? Yeah, I think yeah. everybody has okay, that. Yeah, yeah. prepared a document. Uh, basically, we'd like to um, discuss uh, having a select board uh, make uh, attendance at town meeting or improving in. Attendance at town meeting, a sanction policy of the select board, and have um, and have this continue uh, years ahead. Uh, this is something that Dad and I worked on last year. Uh, hard to really determine uh, what, the, uh, what the results were. Uh, we did see that there were about, I think, half a dozen uh, new people at town meeting. They may have been there coincidentally, or they may have been there as a result of our efforts. Uh, but I think everyone here um, uh, is pretty familiar with what we did last year, which was we sending out uh, postcards, um, uh, reaching out to people, uh, you know, many different ways, including uh, additional street signs, uh, lawn signs, and so on. Um, and uh, one of the things that worked particularly well, Eric is not here tonight, but she was the person who came up with the idea of a town meeting light, and that seemed to work very well, both of us. So pre town meeting and town meeting. So you're um, doing that again. And so we've listed here, um, you know, we've listed here uh, the efforts that we made uh, last year. Uh, and we think we have a template in place um, uh, and a timeline to have that continue this year. And we would like to select for um, to take this on. We'd like this to become a town effort and have it continue year after year going forward. So uh, also we met with Renick and talked about that, about her staff helping make that all happen. Um, I think the key is it's going to take five years. If, if we have a 20% town meeting uh, attendance, it'll take five years. But we're shooting 
that we could get over 50% at the end of five years. So it's this constant attempt to inform the town, both when is it be there, provide child care, um, when at the end of town meeting last year, the moderator said, oh, um, you know, who's new? I went to two people and I said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Both people said, I'm here because of child care. So um, that's a very informal survey, but um, some of these things really make a difference for people being able to attend and be involved in the town meeting. So um, we think that some of these ideas are the way to move forward. Um, I think we had a great meeting thinking that, yep, it's doable. Um, I'm able to help this year. I wrote up the, the release for the Conway Currents, realizing, oh, it has to be in the May Conway Currents if you want people to come to the June event. Um, so we're happy to be helpful, but I think move the official effort kind of into the town office. So that's what we're hoping the select board would say, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know, I, I think the other uh, one more thing that this focus has resulted is just getting more people thinking about getting more people to town meeting. And um, I just shared a story about our town moderator, Jim Report, who stopped me and let me know that he, he was thinking and, and he thinks that there's a lot of that there's new residents that just don't know what a town meeting is and don't understand our form of government and that they can have a role in it just by showing up at town meeting. And that he, so he was talking about wanting to offer a program to gear towards new residents, explaining what a town meeting form of government is. And um, so I thought that was, you know, that's, that's kind of way born and raised and you know, just to have people like that focusing on that is, is an accomplishment in and of itself. So. And, and with our meeting, we also said, oh, how can we maximize the website? You know, there, there are places on the website where you can click on a state explanation of a town meeting. It's about 18 pages and it's a little much, but but we could create our own little thing that says, wow, you get to make, you decide. Um, so, yeah. um, so one thing I should, I should just let everybody know is that, you know, of course I do have a timeline that I inherited, which is great um, since I didn't have to invent it, but for all the, all the steps that need to happen for a town meeting. So my thought was just to take these and just plop them right into the timeline, you know, and and make sure it's not a, a huge amount of extra money, but there is a mailing and stuff involved. So just make sure that, that I get that added to the budget every year. Last year there was a little bit of scrambling. I've already had to do some, um, some <laughs> scrambling to come up with money just to buy signs. I think this is what was mm -hmm. what, what account did that come from? Where how can this happen? You know, it's, it's not like you guys can just write checks dealing with it. Yeah, so even a small amount of money, you know, um, that needed to be something that was discussed. Now, going forward, there may be some additional expenses, for example, for child care. Okay. So, you know, the child care thing really takes off. Um, and it turns out that we need to have somebody other than volunteers to do that. Town might have to hire somebody to watch the kids during town meeting. And then maybe there are snacks or something like that. So worst case scenario, I can't imagine that four or five years from now we're talking more than a few hundred dollars. Yeah. But clearly that would be money well spent if it contributes to getting more people involved in town meeting, new residents, and particularly younger families, you know, with kids. Um, so I think we may have the parent that PTA at the school. Interested in supporting that and using some they did last year. They're yeah. very, very they, generous. They also told me that it's already they, covered for this right. year. Yeah. yeah, so that may happen that way going forward, but we just don't know. Yeah. But the the, the mailing the postcard is is an expense too. So well, there was a yeah. That's right. yeah yeah, but but and that that can come out of my the town administrator budget. So right. I can, I can and like I told Kristen that it's so there's a real good reason for the school to support this in every way that they can for the PTA to support it because this is how they introduce the young children and the young families to the school. It's a perfect way to do it. And um that seems to have resonated in their moments of yeah. I just I have a friend who sold two houses in Conway. The reason they bought the houses school. And, and what we found last year was like, we have a neighbor who had just moved. We wrote them a postcard and they were like, oh, what's the town meeting? I mean, it was that we moved into town. It takes an effort 
to go after them to say, why do you have it? Here's the date, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm all in favor. I support this 100%. I don't know what we have to do to whatever we have to do to keep you know, keep going forward with this. I think to me, I think signs are key. We did so much better last than, than last year was so much better sign wise than I can ever remember it. Signs are definitely key. And um, that one the transfer station, everybody goes to the yeah. transfer station. Everybody. Yeah, we're about to put the one out in front of um, town offices and then back up the transfer station. Because it's also reminding people if you let your new people let your vote and come back. So that they can actually come to town meeting and vote. Yeah, I personally think that this should be not just a town meeting, but in general to get information out to, to our townspeople. I know we don't want to lit up electric sign out front. Maybe we can come up with another idea like a church style. <laughs> you know what do you call those things? Where you, you know what I mean? Where you have the letters and you have them up there. Support? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Something like that. You make yeah. jokes at this meeting. <laughs> Joke. Usually the moderator does. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> we try to. Oh, obviously, think of the Goodyear blimp. You know, because <laughs> that's that, it's you know we have a, a small one of those. We've got that little read across with electronic signing. And opportunities here. <laughs> I hadn't thought of the blimp option. <laughs> a, a good neighborhood to remember to put some signs up is the southern end of Conway, the southern end of North Poland Road and Poland Road. Uh, they feel especially ignored by we here at this end of town. I thought that's why they moved there for that reason. <laughs> uh, they, they would appreciate a sign. That was the moderator. My son is in Jordan. <laughs> No, a sign saying town meeting is on, you know, whatever. Or, oh, I see. Or town election or something. But, um, thank you. This is awesome. And glad to glad to keep going forward with this. Great. We'll make it happen. Yeah. And, and we'll be in touch very shortly about the postcard and everything. Perfect. With that, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so disappointed that the dog conversation is just part of the town of the meeting. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. I'll be in touch too with you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Are you going to move? All right, next is Bob Armstrong to discuss the pricing options for the new electricity aggregation contract, which, was, by the way, I am a total supporter of this now. So, so uh, yes. I, I am going to take slight advantage of having the microphone for a few minutes because there still are people that don't really understand the aggregation. So I would love to talk a little bit about the aggregation. I'm a promoter of the aggregation like you. I think it is great. Um, uh, so anyway, um, the reason that we're doing this is that is, is that we're in the we're in the last year of a three year contract. And we need to have a new contract that will start next January 1st. And that feels like a long ways away. But our experience is that over the winter time, it's a bad time to be trying to sign a contract. That the winter prices are typically quite a bit higher than the summer prices. And it's hard to get a good price in the winter time. Uh, and here in the spring, that's when we got our good contract three and a half years ago. And so we've gone, so we put out a, a request for bids. Uh, and if we think we, it's not low enough, we don't have to take those. And in a month or two, we can put out a request for bids again. But so it's possible that we may take this contract and it's going to occur next Monday. So it's good that you guys know about it. And, and you know, from my perspective, it's great that you voted me to keep you informed and to at least have the authority, along with Veronique, that we could sign that contract for Conway. Um, but the reason it's important is that when we get the bids, we have only a few hours to sign the contract. So, so we can't get the bids and say, we'll take it to our select board meeting and see what they say. You know. Um, and now some towns have the people on their select board be on the call and look at the bids, but usually they're really not the most knowledgeable people. And, and really, 
we are all doing this under the guidance of a broker who puts out the bids and who knows the market. And we all will hopefully follow the lead of our broker. So, so anyway, so we're in the last year of a contract. Right now, our prices, as some people might know, but our standard product for most people in Conway is about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And then to that, you add what Eversource calls the distribution charge, which I think is 13 or 14 cents. And that gets to be the number that you would see on your, your Eversource bill uh, that, and your bill will say you're getting your electricity from Conway. Yeah, uh, if you're not in the aggregation, it would be about 22 or 23 cents plus the 13 cents for the distribution. So you'd be up around 35 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, now we, the nice, one of the great things about aggregation is that we have two other optional products that you could buy. You could switch to not buying. So, so the product that we made, our standard product has 25% more renewable electricity than the law requires. And the reason we have that set is before we formed the aggregation, we sent a postcard out to everyone in town. We got about 75% of them returned and almost universally people said, we would like to be buying more renewable, but we don't wanna be paying more than ever source. And so, so that's, that's what we've set as our standard product. More renewable, cheaper than ever source. Um, now, if you don't want to buy that much renewable, you can choose other products. So you could choose no extra renewable, and that's about nine cents instead of our 10 cents for renewable. Or you could pay about 13 cents a kilowatt hour and get 100% renewable. So those are your choices. And notice that's still a, a lot lower than ever source. So, so it all feels pretty good. Uh, the, what, we know though that we're not gonna ever get nine cents or 10 cents per kilowatt electricity probably ever again in our lifetime because that contract came out right during the beginning of the pandemic when nobody was driving their cars or flying airplanes. There was a glut of gas and oil and the electricity companies were desperate to you know, get people to buy more electricity. So we're, so we're, but okay. Now, one of the interesting things that's happening now is that there are two towns that have come to us and said, we would like to join your aggregation. Those two towns are Wendell and Leverett. And uh, they're in an aggregation. Uh, they're both paying right now around 23 and a half cents per kilowatt hour compared to our nine or cents per kilowatt hour. And so when they had to go out for their most recent contract, they made it short. They knew that our contract was going to start on January 1st, so they had theirs end on January 1st so that they can join ours if, if we want. And at the last meeting we had, all of the towns said, you know, why not? Um, th there really isn't any downside except one, and I hope this isn't true, and I don't know if this will, you know, this might be in the paper, but... Um, Leverett tends to be a very independent town. And when we tried to form a bro broadband, the Wired West Broadband Project, in the middle of the project, Leverett said, we'd rather do it ourselves. And they quit working with Wired West and they built their own. And they were originally one of our towns in the aggregation project. And they said, you know, you guys are taking a long time trying to herd 13 towns through this project. And we're just going to go do it on our own. And it was difficult for them to get a good price and they didn't get as good a price as we did. Um, and so, but, but I, when, when six days from now, if we decide that we want to take this contract, all of the towns that are part of this bidding process have to say we're in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise that, that those prices aren't valid because those prices were based upon the collective load of all of our towns. So it's, it's up or down? It's, it's up or down, okay. yes. And and including Leverett, and so 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 Leverett has not said no no we're we're you know going to do this, but it's I, I it's they, it's they're the they're the one town that I fear you know that might say no we're not going to be in it, but so and Wendell has assured us we're in. I mean Wendell we're not worried about Wendell, but anyway okay. 
Um, would it affect our price, their participation? Would it, would it affect our price if they just decide the last minute not to do it? No, but we would have to go out to bid again. You know, so in other words, uh, it, right. we we wouldn't be able to say yes. We were, will accept these prices. Now, I don't think that you know, if we went out bid another month, the prices will probably won't change very much. So, so we had a meeting last Monday, eight days ago, uh, looking at what it's called indicative prices. So when you go out to bid, you get indicative prices, and then you get um, executable prices, and, uh -huh. and and separated by a couple of weeks. And the indicative prices. So for for these prices, and then you could look at the other sheet that I gave you, but you will see that we got bids back from. Uh, um, who is it? Oh, I think that these are just called supplier one and supplier two. We left the names off so that so that it would be sort of secret, not that it matters. And uh, and and but they're both about exactly the same. And so and so we you can look at a, a six month contract for about fifteen cents. You can look at a, a one year contract for about fourteen point six cents. You can look at a three-year contract for about 13.9 cents. And both suppliers gave us pretty much the same pricing, although one of the suppliers wasn't willing to give us a three-year contract. They're, they're just worried about the future, just like who knows what the future is going to be. And so if we like the price of a three-year contract, only one of the suppliers is really available to us. And there are a couple other suppliers that that we were surprised didn't bid and they may bid next time we do it. So, um, so what's the downside of a short contract over a long contract? Usually, well, it depends upon what you think the price of electricity is going to do. Uh, uh, when, when Leverett put out their bid a year ago, uh, they got a high price. So they just signed for a one-year contract, and you know, so that they, and and then in that one year, they were hoping then to join us with our contract. Um, when uh, three and a half years ago, right at the beginning of the pandemic, the electricity prices were lower that Eversource announced were tremendously low, mm -hmm. and so we went out for two bids. We went out, we put a bid out. For a for a five month contract that ended on January first, mm -hmm. and for a three year contract that started on January first, because mm -hmm. we wanted to we could, because right. we figured we could get a very low price for that five month contract, which right. we did, and it was even it was about eight point eight cents. Right. Oh. So what's the net effect again? I bet Lever pulls the same stunt they did the last time and backs out. We would have to go out to bid again, go out. and we would probably go out to bid again and not invite Leverett to be part of our load. Mm -hmm. So, taking that into account, a shorter contract better than a longer contract? No, no, it's irrelevant to that. No, not it's just relevant to the bidding process. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. And, and actually, we went out to bid for a six month contract, a one year contract, a two year contract, I mean, and a three year contract. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, and I was pleased to see that we're getting a, a lower and lower and lower price as the contract gets longer, which it doesn't always mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. um, but it's not getting that much lower. Okay. And then all of these other, all of the other things here are for the basic electricity plus, um, you, you know, 38% renewable or 25% renewable or 5% renewable. And, and uh, we, we, just to see what the prices would be, we added in a couple of interesting kinds of renewable one was well we always we, we often put in national wind re, uh, recs renewable energy certificates and these are these are very very inexpensive renewable certificates that have basically no value and they charge almost nothing for them and so so and, and I don't want this to get too long but towns that really like to brag that they're at 100 percent renewable buy them from Texas wind towers and it does nothing for new england and texas does basically gives them away and then you can say oh we're at 100 percent and you're really not that you know i mean in other words you're not contributing to new england renewable energy at all so 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 three years ago when we decided what conway's options were going to be we did not include national wind 
renewable energy certificates in our products. We have no, no additional renewable, 25% class one renewable. Class one means local in New England and not hydro. And we have 100% renewable, renewable, class one renewable. So that all those other prices are all in this form if you want to look at it. My proposal is, is that we that we buy exactly the same products that we bought before. And it seems like there are some people who don't want renewable, so they can go with 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 no additional renewable, and that's fine. And but I, and my goal there is we want to keep them in the aggregation, so they stay in the aggregation. They don't buy any additional renewable. That's great. A lot of most people in Conway are buying twenty five percent. Probably, probably seventy five percent of the Conway residents are buying are, are buying twenty five percent extra renewable, and a few people are buying one hundred percent renewable. And most of them are actually people who have solar panels. And it's very rare that there's a month during the year they buy any electricity at all. Yeah. And so as long as they're buying a little electricity, they will they will pay a little bit extra for it. Uh, still less than whatever source would be, but it's not the cheapest of our products. Uh, so next Monday, we're going to get executable prices. We're going to have a big conference call. Um, we are going to basically have to say we're in or we're not in. We're going to have to say what our three products are. My proposal is that we make them the same as we had before and uh, and and that we're in unless we don't like the price. And really, to me, that's a call that we would leave up to our broker. Yeah, I see supplier one is a tiny, tiny bit cheaper, but uh, I think one thing we can rely on is corporate grief. So I I would personally say or recommend that we do, you know, a fixed contract as long as possible. But a supplier one is cheaper, but it's, you know, it's it's like maybe a dollar a month. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, so on the normal, I, I on the that, normal electric bill, it's, you know, it's I think the added years of the contract is more <laughs> beneficial than the lower cost of the supplier one. So it seemed on the call that we had, most of the towns were leaning towards going for the longer three-year contract, as long as the prices are so close that it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then we don't have to go through this again. I mean, every time we have to go through this, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, you know, effort and, and makes you nervous. And mm -hmm. so, so. No, it's uh, great. I think that, like, that it's the, the um, whether or not you go for three-year or not is like the the con is the decision that you make at the time or uh yes yes okay. the, the, we, we would everybody would have to absolutely agree on who the vendor is we're buying from and what the term of the contract is mm -hmm. and then each town can choose among all of these products what they want for their for their town's optional products and standard products and that's based basically on your on your own reading of the geopolitical situation the next presidential election, basically, who's going to win? Well, determining the products, no, it has to do with how you read your town. Mm -hmm. So there are towns who they would say, we're only interested in price. And they were not at all interested in having any additional renewable at all. This is what the selectmen said. And so they chose like one product and it was no additional renewable. And whereas... I was thrilled that we had sent out a postcard and gotten a survey back from many people in town who said, we really want to buy additional renewable. We, we believe in solving climate change and us doing our part. We're happy to pay a little bit extra, but we don't want to pay more than ever. So, so, that's, so, so then that's a question of selecting the product that you think meets that, and I'm pretty sure, and, and we have. So that worked out well, but but so how you choose the products among the six products that we're bidding on is up to is up to the town. But but you know whether we go with the price or not, you know, do I think that you know fourteen cents per kilowatt hour, which is fifty percent increase over what we're paying right now? I mean, you know, it's a significant increase, but what we're Frankly, what we're worried about is what's the chance that uh, Mr. Putin is going to do something that's going to disrupt the energy prices again? The you know since since the big spike in energy costs, we've we've ridden out this spike in energy cost, and everybody else is paying a huge amount now for their electricity because of what's going on 
you know, in Ukraine. And uh, is it going to happen again? I mean, you know, and I, if, if anybody knows, let me know. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's scary to think that a year from now, if, if we if we only took a one year contract and we're out to bid in another year, I don't know what the electricity market is going to be. So that's a geopolitical thing you're talking about. Yeah. And so that is that's it's that's that's the length of the contract, and whether we should take a short contract and think that the market is going to keep going down. The market is really where it normally is right now. I mean, the market has kind of returned to normal, and I don't think it's going to get a whole lot better. But something but could it happen. Take much for it to get a whole lot worse. It, it, it happens but, back. but it, it could happen. It could get a lot worse. So, and but, but really, um, you know, I have confidence in our broker. I hope that all of the towns will look look to our broker to give us advice. He's given us great advice so far. Everybody likes him, but you, Bill. So, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. He hangs his head in shame and sighs. <laughs> no, no, he he he, he remembers it, you know, and laughs about. It. So it's fine. It's fine. Bob, between now and next Monday, you're going to like sort of herd, herd the towns and you get to yes on one supplier name. No, we're going to be on a call. Do that? We'll be, yeah, we'll be on a call and and really we're going to have to say, you know, which broker and and we may have it, you know, if, if the towns all want a three year contract, there really is only one broker to go with. Right, right. If not, yes, our broker might say, I have more, you know, I don't know. Yeah. The, either of these guys are buying and selling to us exactly the same electricity. Right. You no, know, it's right. not like we could say, I like this yeah, guy. I'm just wondering. I like so you can avoid, so you can go into Monday with a relatively, you know, good idea that you're going to have a chance to bid on the contract and not have somebody backed out or be, you know, some have half the people wanting a 12 month and half the people wanting a 36 month. And that, that may happen. Counts. And then we'll talk about it. And then one of the things that's been great about the people who've been attending and the people who are representing their towns at these meetings is people are, we've been very good about talking and coming to a consent list. And then we, but we have to come to a unanimous, you know, yeah. right. consensus. Right. Right. Uh, that's tremendous. This is like there's so many people that I talk to since this has come about that it's just like you can't believe that you can't believe that we have it good compared to other towns that, that, that don't participate and never never bother to deal with this at all. I get calls all the time from Asheville. I get calls all the time from Montague, towns that we recruit, we tried to talk them into joining us three and a half, four years ago, yeah. and they were not interested. And, and I also get calls from people in the towns whose selectmen were not interested in having any additional renewable energy. And, and they're mad at me. It's like, well, you know, how did you get to have these great choices for the people of your town? And, and I don't like our choices. You, you, you know, so. <laughs> Oh, I can say it. Talk to your select. <laughs> Good answer. We're we're as a town, we're really just blessed that you that you that this has been your that this has been your pet project. Yeah. For, for like you you just really knocked this out of the. When I read about this law, I saw no downside. I talked to Greenfield; they were aggregated, and everything I learned about it sounded like it was great. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Bob. It's it's really good work. So. Uh, you know, next next Monday I'll maybe I'll come and tell you what we did. How about that? Awesome. No, I'll probably if you get it in the. In the and a really uh, underrated part of it is just how much this specifically helps the seniors and the people on fixed incomes and the people that are really counting their pennies every month. It just really helps. For the first year, first year and a half, I would talk to people and they would say, "Yeah, it's only going to save me, you know, two cents on my electricity. Uh, you know, I'll stick with that resource." And we had no idea then that that the price of electricity was going to go crazy. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Thank you. Bob. Thank you. Yeah. We're good. Um, so it's six thirty. We could start. It's up to you. Uh, you've got two, two forms, right? Capital is listed as first. But yeah. Okay. Capital, I don't really think on the agenda. Well, no, I mean, no, we're just at the beginning.
Okay, we're off, we're off. Okay, so capital and finance, if you want to call your meetings to order, we can start our joint meetings. All right, yeah. second time I'm doing this. <laughs> so I'm calling the Capital Improvements Committee meeting to order. Second. Uh, and the next thing I say is all in favor? Aye. 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 So we have two things if we can do them today. Well, we, we have to call on the finance. finance. Oh, oh I finance. I'm sorry. Okay. Motion to call the finance committee meeting in order with the capital committee and the honorable select board. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the only two things we need to do tonight are approved minutes from March 30th and April 13th. I reviewed those minutes. Appreciate you putting those together. I thought they looked good. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for both meetings. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. I'll get them off to you. I think they have a draft watermark on them. I'll take that off. Okay. Or should I upload them? I don't know. Uh, you're more than welcome to, but we can work it through with Adam and get you, yeah, get you settled on the website. Extra bonus point for doing the minutes. Like that. Extra, minutes. Oh. extra bonus. <laughs> a sticker next to your name yeah. and everything. I think stickers board. I think the, I think the chart committee charter says that uh, well, the chair shouldn't be also taking that. Yeah. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Is that true? Do not worry. I will delegate <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll go around the room. <laughs> <laughs> all that I, Chris, what else do you think we need to well, well, I mean, summarize I mean, anything? We are, we are discussing the warrant, the budget, and the cost of living and mm -hmm. uh, adjust. You know, so the, the one thing that we thought um, that we thought it would be good to do is just really deal with the deal with the capital requests. Like, yes. Yeah. Uh, First, and since Ron is here, it seems uh, Ron Sweet, I would be part of And uh, it seems like uh, for two, it is time to do all that. So, um, so if I remember his articles 10, 11, 12, 13, that's correct. And we did have a meeting with Ron last week to discuss the concerns brought about um, the select board and finance committee on these articles. So Ron, Ron since you're here, um, can, we, I just, can you tell us, can you tell about the, can you tell about the, the boom lift, the chipper, the compact loader, plow truck, and plow truck. Well, is that, is that Ron or is that the capital? Well, we're, so, the capital improvements is gonna discuss it at town meeting. Oh, okay. well, so we'll run. Mm -hmm. um, your plan seems like we should talk about it, not Ron. Yeah, right. yeah, I did. That I, I mean, yeah. to some extent, this is all practice, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> but what happens at town meeting is so, Mr. moderator, I got a question for Ron Sweet, okay. and then what? Let me use that, please, direct the questions to the that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm okay for you Well, let's just go article to article right. as we did before. Um, I think the most straightforward one is Article 10 uh, for various reasons. Uh, one, because the boom lift rental is quite expensive. And two, because the what Ron is asking for is used. And we all know the difference between new and used makes a huge difference. Uh, so I think that one's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't have in front of me the cost per for the rental. I had written that down. I'm sorry, Ron, I didn't bring that document with me. I can remember this. year was we spent $12,000. $3,000. And the, the life term of a boom lift like that is not just 10 years. It should surpass that. How many months a year get used? Well, we're currently in the fiscal four year. So yeah. already in addition. Yeah. We're trying to get for four months already in addition. This fiscal year. Yeah. This fiscal year in. 
the tax card is all reduced. You know, if you rent it by the month and, and you have no problem to come while you're renting it, you, you don't use it. Well, I think the price we talked about was, was it $1,800 a week? No, they, that was the check. That's the oh, that was the check. Yeah. <clears throat> We can rent these things by the week, but then it's the day to get them and the day to take them back. And so, Chris, is this a new or used book? This is a used used, book. used book. Okay. One of the few things that I'm recommending for use, yeah, because it's not it's not wouldn't be considered a frontline mm -hmm. piece of equipment, and if something happens to it, there's plenty of other things for us to do. While it's being repaired or okay. whatever. Yeah. Unfortunately, that ain't so true. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, re you know, relay the questions that I get about this stuff. And because, uh, and if this is true in every town, the highway, the highway stuff is just a hugely popular topic of conversation, and everybody seems to have expertise in. A lot of people seem to have expertise in this stuff, or think they do. And so the question that the comments that that uh, that have been directed at me is, why do you need a, 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 a why do you need to buy it? What's wrong with renting it when it seems like when we rent it, it's sitting in the yard anyway? Isn't this really just a question of managing its use more effectively so that you line up the project so that the, when you have it, it's employed. The machine is at when you rent it is employed, and then you would only need to rent it for a couple of months instead of for a whole year. So that's like almost verbatim where I heard from multiple people. And so that's, and you're going to hear this question mm -hmm. at town meeting 100% guaranteed. So, so I guess and there's always going to be, you can't predict when the tree is going to fall. Mm -hmm. well, and you always have the resource, the people available according to the plan. But weather changes everything. Yeah. I mean, it, weather is our business. And when we have to rely on, all right, let me, um, I just, I took the grader out of my plan for replacing it and trying to rent, decided that we would rent one to appease people. I can't find one now. Mm -hmm. But the place that I was getting from had eight graders. That they were renting two months ago. They only have two when they're both out on rental. They sold the other six to some company up in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I can't find any other place to rent from. So this is my yeah. dilemma with renting. And it, it's the same with Chipper or any of that. It all depends on what is happening yeah. at the moment as to whether you're available or not. It's a huge, but it's a huge, it's a huge chunk of money that we're just giving to somebody else when we could have it available to us all the time. I, I, I don't agree with the theory that renting is a way to go. But the town has passed to run all of this tree work, and the town has passed to run all of the building maintenance, and the boom lift is really useful for both of those. That's a good. Yeah. That's you know you, that's you, good cleaning out gutters or you know light bulbs on town buildings or mm -hmm. underpass mm -hmm. underpass yeah so that's a good way to phrase it and that's good I, I think to, uh, I, I mean I when Ron does it when Ron leaves like trees that. on the ground he gets calls you get calls too yeah you know not what people not being happy with us leaving the trees you know. Not taken away. Right. <clears throat> this is the third year. What third year we've been renting boomless? You know, we we've been a lot longer. Yeah, longer. it's been a well, well, well but but when through. when you, you tried to come in and buy one, third year been more, way longer than it's just been so six years. I'm I'm really interested in clarifying the economic argument here because I I buy exactly what you're saying, but I think in order to get it to the town meeting, 
we have to be really strong about the economic argument. So, okay, it's costing us 40,000. We were, you're saying that we've rented cost us twelve thousand dollars so far this year. Are we still renting it? Or do we plan to rent this room for the remainder of the year, or are we? It's probably not the remainder. Okay, so year. you're you're thinking twelve the grand is the maximum. Usually we rent it three months a year. Oh, three three months. Oh, three to four, and this year it's been four. Okay, right. and that's that was my next question. So typically we're spending anywhere from nine to twelve thousand. But that was before the shade tree law, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, so there's a change in now. conditions, mm -hmm. but even. Going retroactive, we're, we're nine to twelve thousand dollars a year just on renting this thing. You're saying if you buy a used one, how many years of, of use out of that do you think you can you can get? Um, so we just uh, ten years. Ten years out of the used one. Okay. So, so I mean, like I said, it's not a frontline piece of equipment. Right. So, so even based on historical uses, you're talking about you you normally spend ninety to one hundred twenty thousand dollars just on rental. For a piece of equipment that you're asking for, one of the things that came up last time when we when I asked the buyer to use cleaning up was, oh, it did cost a lot of money for inspections. There's a yearly inspection that has to be done on the machine, and basically, it's just an inspection, mm -hmm. a general inspection of the machine, right? That has to be certified, which is probably three or four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Every 10 years, the boom has to be inspected. And a few years ago, when I took a court, uh, safety course on the boom, um, the instructor was saying that it's typically around $1,000 for that. Do you have other equipment that has to go through annual inspection? No. Uh, so well, be... our trucks, all our trucks. Well, that's so. road, that's road work. Yeah. You know, yeah, okay. All right. So. So then that's an operating cost. That's not really a capital cost. I mean, right. The other thing that came up with insurance. Yeah. And it's not any different than us renting it or owning it. Yeah. There is no difference. You're talking liability. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always the safe money. I don't know, understand how the town of Conway can't get it through their head that. Our, we're, we're covered for whatever we do mm -hmm. on our liability insurance. Doesn't matter whether it's a rented piece of equipment or we own it. So, John, I, I have the same thought process is you're either going to pay 40 grand for this now for a 10 year term, or in that same term, 120 grand for a rental you don't know you'll have or not. And that rental price can go up. Right. And right. I think that's the you argument. You gain the convenience plus you gain the right. use. Right. That, that the shade, that this tree responsibility, you know. Right. Right. So it sounds like it's a, it's a no brainer to me from a financial standpoint. Almost well, still I mean, it, it means that we can go work it for one day at a time and not, no, uh, not do the batch work, right? Have to wait until you can get one and then do all the work. Right. right. Yeah. We could also put a town sign on it and you have the little floor of 65 feet with that town sign. Make you guys do. <laughs> no, as soon as you say used, you're going to be a lot of people that are going to soften their opposition. I really believe that. <clears throat> okay. Do you need that big win for the, the, the other argument, though, that that was also, I remember from the past years is. How come you need to buy one when Frontier always rents theirs? Because they have specific things that they do. So do we need a, a well, what we're meeting on Thursday yeah. for our finance commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would there be any reason the fire department would require or might need that room rent at some point? I'm not sure what the laws are as far as fire department goes. Their equipment may be different. Once we build a skyscraper or two, I was thinking cats and dogs. You rescue me. <laughs> you know, rescue the cat from the top of the library rotunda. Yeah. I was told that when we took over the old fire truck, that that was no longer usable as a fire truck. For the fire department. I don't know why. So all we're going over these one at a time, should we vote as a capital improvement committee meeting on whether we recommend them? Or are we going to have another meeting in time? Between now and the next Monday? Yeah. Well, I mean, we can vote now. We could. Yeah, I do. If you want to meet this Thursday, 
you want to follow your recommendation. Yeah, right. yeah. Both recommendations. Right. So Roy is Roy here. Yes. I'm <laughs> older. No, no, <laughs> oh hi Roy. Oh, I'm I'm looking for you up on, on the screen. <laughs> right here in person. Well, I have so hard to play. <laughs> Good. So I make a motion. That's so, what so you just asked for a show of hands. All right. So I am making can, a motion. Can we just before you do that? Yeah. Can we add the word used in here? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I actually had that friend these two sitting yeah. So I think if we're going to vote, let's vote the, vote the oh, article the way we want it to read. Yeah. Well, well, we don't have to do that. Oh, right. I mean, that, yeah, that's a good point. But yeah. Well, you're voting on a used one. Yes, we are. So but I'm, there's no way to vote the green. We don't buy a new Right. Right. But, 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 but so, we don't have to, we don't, we don't vote the wording of the article. That's no, 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 no. But I, so I just want to confirm that the word used will be in there. Yes. For right. a used 65 foot straight boom lift. Great. Is uh, there any opposition on the capital improvement board to this article as it's written with used in place? Well, how many? We could just have a show of hands of who's this. Uh, yeah, do, I don't. I'm sorry. This, have to, this is going to say, you know, two, four, two against, or right, right. whatever. So you, you do have this, to have this a vote. vote. Okay. Everybody should say their name and their vote because, you know, just to be a motion. Okay. It'll be in the. So, be, you know, okay, I don't make a motion to vote, right? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, Phyllis, if you want to. All right. So, <laughs> I'm making a motion for capital improvements to vote to recommend. Article 10 in in the town. Article 10. We just want a number of yes. Yeah. It's not a motion. Just it's just, motion. For, just, yeah, it's just the boom lift. So, lift. so I'm, yeah. I'm going to vote yes. I, I recommend. Can we have a show of hands, please? There you go. Yes. To vote. Yes. All right. All right. Unanimous. Okay. And, no, and five to zero. These numbers might get rejiggered around. So um, so instead of like article 10, it's just this is the, oh, yeah. this is oh, the boom lift article. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Article 11 has history um, because this was on an article last year that was voted down by the town. Um, there's no change to the article, which is a little concerning, but the same uh, reasoning that John and I brought up for the boom lift uh, is even more so for this chipper because the rental cost um, is huge. Now, currently, uh, Ron has a deal, but an amazing deal, renting out um, a chipper, but we don't know how long that's going to last. Um, it's also not with a rental company. It's, it's not with a rental company. private party. Yeah. So that person can just rescind the agreement at any time. So for a rental company, it would be $1,800 a week. How does Springfield? So we have to go to Springfield. What's the actual price of the thing? Two thousand dollars. So, so it's a it's a guy who uses it, and this is his spare, and so he is letting he is storing his spare in Conway, and for two thousand dollars a month, we can use his spare. I don't want to use it. We got paid for the maintenance. He actually, yeah, he came and got it. Yeah. Right, but and he's welcome to come and get it and take it to him. And that like and the use, box. Do we the box? Do we have a formal? We have a formal contract in place with him. Correct. No. We don't. No. It's very tight. Oh, it's a handshake. It's a handshake. Okay. That's a contract. That's why it shouldn't be. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it all legal? I mean, in the in the company that we bank for people. Um, we he, he's done a lot of tree work for the town of Conway. He does a lot of tree work for mm -hmm. a lot of municipalities. Um, he understands what our needs are, and that's why he's willing to rent out a community of the town. Mm -hmm. Typically, a chipper is needed how many months out of the year? I can't answer that one right now. Depends on the weather. It goes hand in hand with boom lift. Yeah. But it's also this year, we've already used it a year, um, month and a half pretty much straight in the last two months. 
um, just because of the storm damage it's happened. So high estimates would be four months out of the year. Yes. And then a lot in between here and there. You know, because when a tree comes down, instead of pushing it off to the side, we can just go over the chip and, you know, typically a dead tree, when it comes down, there's no value in saving. The easiest thing to do with it is to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, so 1,800 times a week, if you divide that by 92,000, that's just just slightly over 51 weeks to get to 92,000. So basically a year, you're paying more. Right, but if, if we're only rent using the, the rental for 16 weeks out of the year. Right, now you're four years. Exactly, four years. But with the shade tree law and having to get. It could be potentially a lot more. Yeah. Right, because you might have to well, rent it more often. Some of the problems. I, I don't see how much. I'm, I'm, Bernie, I'm still confused about <laughs> how the shade tree law applies to Ron taking down all the deadfall on all the roads in Conway. So I did do a lot of research on this, and uh, it's a very real law. <laughs> well, the law is real. It was yes. passed in 1963, right. but it protects trees from coming down. It doesn't say anything about what you do with trees that are blown down by the weather. There was only one bylaw in another town. It's talking. because we were under the understanding because our roads, our right-of-ways weren't taken in fee that the landowner still owned the trees. Yeah, I, I, I And now they're saying that the shade tree law says that the town owns the trees and that so the landowner is no longer responsible for the trees in the right of That is correct. And the, that is there is a, a difference. So so again, my, my question goes to does that mean that we as a town are responsible for every tree that's in every right of way that's already down in town? And then part of your charge is to drive around town and figure out all those trees that are laying by the side of the road and chip them up or get rid of them. I did ask related but separate questions. I did ask town council the question. Um, you know, it's a safety. right? Legally, the town is not required to remove the trees from the right of way. Okay, I, I mean the ones that are down. Yeah. However, yeah. legally, the town is required to keep safe roads. Correct. So if the town wishes to take on the liability of having trees, you know, that people, if they went off the road, could hurt mm -hmm. themselves on and all of that, that's that's well, up to that the town. That's the same whether a tree's standing or lying. But we're okay. now, we, we don't have, we can't push a tree that's in the right of way onto somebody's, onto property, somebody's property, right. which before we did, because it was considered that tree was mm -hmm. there. Right, so if it becomes a safety hazard, you have to remove it. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Which I'm understanding know, that when okay. when we got right away that are only 33 feet wide and the road's 20, 22, 23 feet wide, mm -hmm. it doesn't give you a lot of room on the sides. So right. The right. Trees, so I mean I'm not saying all our roads are that way, but we do have a lot of roads that are Do you have a time limit on how soon you have to get the trees out of there? Funny, I asked that too, and I, I got the answer a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. Reasonable is <laughs> a pretty low standard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here's the other thing that's I'm 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 not sure, but I'm I got a pretty good guess of what's gonna happen. I don't know if anybody's driven around town to oh, see yeah. how many dead trees there are. Yeah. And when somebody calls and complains about a tree, which we hadn't, we get we used to get maybe from a half a dozen falls a year about dead trees, sometimes a dozen. We're, I'm going to say that that number is just going to go right through the roof because it's now a tree that they don't have to worry about. So uh, that, that begs another question. I mean, if you've got a tree that's standing, a, a dead tree that's standing, that you believe that I, as a citizen, believe creates a potential safety hazard. Is that something you're going to respond to because you have a chipper now? Or, I mean, I know historically we wait for the trees to kind of fall down on their own and then we deal with it. But are we going to be proactive in taking taking dead trees down? Tree work got a lot to say about that too. Yes. Well, I know that becomes like shade, I assume that shade tree law comes into effect, but 
Yes, because to take a tree down, you have to have a hearing. Even if it's a dead tree. Yeah, true. Unless yeah, it's, it's a present danger. Unless it's a, a present danger. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Anything over an inch and okay. a half is considered a tree. Okay. Um, which is pretty easy. Is there a difference between the side of the road that has wires and the side that doesn't? Well, lucky for us, that would show us it's pretty proactive about a tree that's threatening their lives. Right, right. Um, and on the last few years, they've done an incredible job of taking out, you know. I always feel bad for them. They do that and we still lose power. Yeah, because every time they, they don't take enough. <laughs> right. I mean, they're, they're, there's some kind of guidelines that they have to follow unless they get a request from a landowner, you know, because a lot of times it's the trees on the landowner's land that falls into the right of way mm -hmm. and gets the power lines. So the, that request a lot of times has to come from the landowner. They also have a faster cycle. They, I think their cycle is five years. They, they want to do all underneath all lines everywhere at, every five years. I think we're at least twice that. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, that raises another question. Sorry, sorry, Ron, but I'm, no. <laughs> if a tree is on private property and falls into the right of way, becomes a safety hazard, you have to clear to the edge of the right of way, but the tree, you don't have to do anything with the rest of that tree, correct? Correct. Okay. And that was pretty much the only thing there's a whole lot of strangeness with trees falling on somebody else's property. And it's like, and some of these laws is like, I know that that tree's going to fall on my property and smash my house. Yeah. And I say something to them, even if it does, even, even if I've said something to them and it falls on my house, it's still my responsibility that the image it was done to my house. In my book, that's wrong. You know, yeah, I mean, your insurance is coming, he's going to come after your if I don't have insurance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 it's so wrong that their insurance, our, or whoever owns the tree's insurance, shouldn't be covering the damage it's done. So, just the reverse of this question if the tree belongs to the town, it falls on the right, it falls down, it falls onto somebody else's property, then we would be responsible for removing the entire tree. I don't think so. Only up to the, the edge of the right of way. I'm still working on that, but I what I've read today, I, I'm pretty sure that the tree becomes the landowner's. Don't don't address that right now. Yeah, the town. The chief, so she says it. if it falls from our from I, our. I, right I'm way. trying to remember. The town can also decide how much of a good neighbor it wants to be. Yeah, yeah. right, right. I'm just thinking through what what are those absolute obligations? Well, yeah, did you get into because Conway is kind of a lot of state forest, mm -hmm. public, you know, um, state owned land. I'm sure there's not going to be an issue with leaving the tree in there. Right, right. That's a good point. Too. Yeah. I'm thinking more of the private property owners yeah. who might issue a complaint to the town because a tree from our right of way fell onto their property and you only cut off the, you know, the, got removed the part that was on our right of way as opposed to, you know, leaving a. Uh, I mean, uh, personally, it would, um, but the uh, landowner. I said something about it being removed. Uh, I'm sure you would. Yeah. Okay. How often do you have to do this kind of tree removal? Every week? Do you have a tree a week, two trees a week? Depends. <laughs> Once in a while, we'll get a two or three weeks or nothing. I think that's a, that's a fair question. Not in terms of what the expected I, use of the chipper. Right. That's right. So normally, it might be uh, every week you have to do something with a tree. Yes, so, I mean, you could stall. You can they run in batches, right? Stall, you know, for two or three weeks, I'll go out maybe two or three times a week. And, you know, not, some of it's just a small tree that's just blocking the road. I mean, it ain't nothing big, big limb come off or something that you can't just go pick up and move. So mm -hmm. um, the other day on Warren Brook, Well, I think well, last Friday with the skid up guy up stopping. Um, and there was a branch down. But the beginning of the week, there was a tree down. So the people on South Park couldn't get out. There's a tree down on both ends of their road. Mm -hmm. Going work, so they couldn't get out at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when I drive around town now, I see a lot of chips chipped up into the woods or 
maybe even on somebody's property. I'm not sure, but at least up into the woods. Yeah. Is, is that what you would do, or is that's, it your, that's probably us doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, we pick and choose. I mean, we don't get flow it. I mean, if it's wooded area, you know, we haven't had any issues with you know chipping and blowing the chip because that's the reason for the chip off. Yeah, right. Is right. because we don't have anything specific. So what we do use is you can only put a small amount in before it starts blowing out all over everything. Mm -hmm. But I assume you don't blow them up onto somebody's lawn. To your question, yeah. town council had sent a, a number of different um, legal snippets, but the takeaway she, she mentioned was one, unless a town was negligent in cutting down a town tree and it falls into a neighbor neighbor's property or the town knew or should have known that the tree was dangerous, there was no liability to the town for a town tree falling onto a neighbor's property. He's talking about cleaning it up. Yeah. Right. And the town may, as part of a good neighbor policy, offer to remove the town mm -hmm. tree from the neighbor's property. If in doing so, the town may cause more damage to the property, a release and authorization yeah. should be obtained from the property owner. Yeah. Right. right. You can see it gets to be quite. Yeah, there's a lot of sequelae. Yeah. Convoluted. Yeah. Yeah. Convoluted. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and my final question is expected life, life expectancy of this new piece of equipment? Mm -hmm. I would say 20 years. 20 years on the chipper. Maintenance is everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have the numbers for you, John. Okay. Okay. So cost neutral if we purchase new. And um, instead of renting, renting would be just over 51 weeks. If we use it 16 weeks out of the year, we would be cost neutral in 3.2 years. And we would have it for approximately 20 years. But Chris, you're using you're using the. I'm not using the rate he has right now. I'm okay. using the using normal weekly rental, or normal rent rate. So and that's uh, let's do the that's, I mean, do the that's not and, that's not the actual numbers that we're dealing with. That's, that's well, it, it, multiply everything by about four because it's two thousand a week versus two thousand a month. Yeah. Oh wait, that's two thousand a month. So that's only five hundred a week. I think it was sixty eight hundred dollars a month. So if I change um, that to five hundred, right? Yeah, if I change that to five hundred a week, you're cost neutral in eleven and a half years. Which one is? Yeah, I'll get it later. Like, 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 but again, that doesn't take into account expected increased use. Or that the con current yeah. contract he has is probably not going to last much longer. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. It's a it's a single supplier. I mean, we shouldn't even be looking at that. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I know. It's, it's it's not. It's, a, yeah, it's a trick deal, yeah. deal, but it's not something when you're trying to put these numbers together. Yeah, because what happens when he goes away? Yeah, I, I agree, and I think you know. If, uh, I don't maybe, think these numbers should be. You can't rely. You can't. Me. You can't rely on that number. You have to rely on the four corners of the truth that you have in hand. You can't just go with projected numbers when there are actual numbers that make your case look worse and try to and try to not mention the actual numbers. Yeah, but my my argument to that is, you know, Ron's gotten us a sweetheart deal on a piece of equipment for a short period of time. So all of a sudden now that's costing him the, the opportunity to get a, a piece of equipment that he really needs it's not, because he's been really good, uh, you know, fiduciary steward of, of our funds. Agreed, agreed. But everybody knows everything. And if you don't bring out the information that you, th okay. that you think yeah. doesn't help your case, somebody else will. And that is much worse for you in that instance. Mm -hmm. Then it looks like you're hiding something. Well, I'm not saying hiding. Not you I mean, personally. You know, yeah, no, I get it. I, I'm not saying to hide it, but I'm... Saying we have this one-off sweetheart deal going on that we, we we're not confident right. that we will be able to retain uh, for the next twenty years, and that is the truth. That is a truthful statement, and that's what you should go like the the idea that you would just not mention that at all and only use the eighteen hundred and hope somebody doesn't catch you on that is is bad. It's just not. I, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody for anything because yeah. everybody always catches you at town meeting yeah. on everything. Yeah. Like I, mean, I never, you can't you can get anything there. Like, is that where your PTSD is? <laughs> that's where every, that's what, that's not, that, that, you're, you're all about to join me. Yeah? So, you know, um, <laughs> um, yeah. so like, 
you know, it, it's 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 this this is an extraordinarily difficult accomplishment. If, if you do, if you can get this done, uh, you you can, you know, it's time to go work in Alaska selling ice cubes. Well, like, I'm, I'm, know, it's, I'm it's concerned like, about how I'm, I'm going to vote as a finance committee member. That's my first concern, you know, and I think that we've made a pretty strong fiscal argument here. Whether whether the town wants to, you know, agree to that, that's. But up to town. So far, the argument is still essentially the argument that was made in December. Okay, and um, it, it's it's better. It's more polished, and it will be better with with, with you all advocating for it. It will, mm -hmm. but it lost. Like it was not a close vote in December. Yeah, it was the meeting got stacked. The meeting did get stacked, but the the people there were people, and, and there were you know there were people that it's fair to say there were people there. That with their knives out and just hoping to to to, to deep six this and other things, but did you? Guys... But 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 they were also they were joined by the great mass, the great middle of the the, the community that is persuadable, and they the, you know who who and, and and it's because when they're when when you have individuals that do this for a living besides besides the highway department. Who say we only buy use the, these things used, and 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 um, and, and they were joined by um, by people of that that I know to be of goodwill who were just trying to help, you know, in, in trying to broker on the floor a compromise. And and but here's the thing, Bill. Uh, um, these people that buy used, they're when they use it, they're making money with it. So when major repairs, they they got income coming from it. You don't get it from the uh, municipality way. We don't make money with this equipment. It costs us money no matter what we do. Yeah. It costs the town money, whether we buy used, new, or whatever. It's just what we're trying to do is have the best available piece of equipment that is usable for us. For a longer term, time. yeah. And when something major goes wrong, it it doesn't come out of the cost of the machine. It comes out of my operating budget, All right? And it's huge to have to have that. Some of them repaired, right. which and, results in a, either a higher cost to the town or or reduction of services to the to the, right. the town's people. Right. Um, what size is this chipper? It's not on here. Eighteen inch. 18 inches? Yeah. It should be okay. on there. So I did I did a little bit of after our last meeting, I did a little bit of searching for used chippers, and it's really easy to find a like a, a 12, 14, 15 right. inch chipper, you know, for for whatever, 30 grand, 15, you know, you know, try to find an 18 inch chipper that's used. And I know that was another concern with right. the resident, but we we don't have a place to deal with yeah. big wood. And it makes I mean, that's what we're renting right now is an 18 inch. It also has a winch on it. And the guys with the winch, it makes their life so much easier having the winch on the machine mm -hmm. to pull with. Because after these last storms, half that wood is you know, all tangled up because yeah. when you push it off the road. Does this new one have a winch? Oh, it will have. Yeah. So can we add a I just went to the winch? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, more detail, yeah. just so that there's none of this. Well, and I can, I can not, buy a used, you know, 14 inch chicker for $15,000. So that's not, not what we're looking at. You know? We're not looking um, to. No. We're not looking to chick good wood. Yeah. But 90% of what falls is not good yeah. or it's soft wood. I had a resident come to me screaming at me because I didn't clean up wood inside its uh, property and driveway after one of the storms this summer. But it was buried in snow and that's why it didn't get done. But it, so I just asked him because he said at town meeting that he, he likes collecting wood off the side of the road. And I said, so. You, you said at town meeting that you like the wood. He goes, oh, it's fine. And I said, so you, you, it doesn't help me. What am I supposed to do with it? 
You don't want me to have a chipper because you want the wood, but yeah, you don't that, want was all. The, that was part of the dissent last year is that they were talking about the wood bank. The wood bank, right? I remember all of that. Yeah. So yeah, the thing is, is the chipper is not for with the wood that we would get at the wood bank. We want to use the chipper for that. We would be using the chipper for branches. Ninety percent is is pine, basically, is what yeah. you're saying. Is the, the, totally yeah, totally there are, what are the arguments against the used chipper? I mean, you, you're making the one argument we made is that they're very hard to find <laughs> an 18 inch. Like, like we're that, yeah, about. well, based on my, I mean, I was. But, yeah, but are there more arguments such. against the used one? Well, you don't know what. You don't know what happened to it. It could have a bent rotor or something in there that you're not really going to find out until you start using it. And most anything that you buy used isn't going to have any kind of warranty on it. I mean, I have confidence that this guy is letting you borrow his chipper because he knows you take good care of it. And I know that he's been had plenty of people wanting to buy his equipment. He doesn't know the care that he gives. Mm -hmm. Was there a possibility we could buy this from him? <laughs> we tried that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big bet. <laughs> and, and the problem with that is you can't necessarily because it has to go out for bid. Yeah. Oh. And you have to take a little bidder. Yeah. And yeah. buying used. Through the bidding system, you know, what mass required just for the sharing it on. Mm -hmm. Not really a, a good way to do it. Okay. Um, as far as the municipality goes, our hands are really tied pretty tight as to how things work. So in, in the event that this article doesn't pass, let's say we, we voted forward. And it doesn't pass. What's your what's your alternative plan to just keep on? Just keep right. I mean, it's in my budget. Yeah. For some of the rental mm -hmm. in my operating budget, which that is another point. It is if a chipper gets purchased, then my operating budget is going to be at a decrease. You know what I have in here for the chipper this year, but I mean that would go away. Out of my budget, lower my budget. Same with the boom lift. Um, out of the rentals, part of my budget. Mm -hmm. um, can I have uh, uh, two minutes? Um, yeah. Has there been any discussion about the possible merits of, um, well, the shade tree law? It doesn't just cover us, it covers all the towns. So seems to me like there's going to be a lot of demand. There's going to be a lot of discussion, just like we're having. Is there any merit to renting this stuff out to other towns Most to help it. offset the maintenance? Most other towns already have their chicken. They've been dealing with the shade tree lots, just that we have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the, the, the reality of this, though, is that you may not even have a persuadable audience. That's my fear. I, it, just just from the fact that this is just six months ago and, and you know, we're, we're, you know we, we, we just had to, you know, we, we, we just, we're talking about how we want people to show up at town meeting. We want new people to show up at town. We want to tell them that their voice matters. And then well, unless unless you say what we disagree with, then we're going to bring it back in six months and Tell you how we know better and, than you and um, whatever. But and, did we have six months ago as a savings? I, mean, I know, I know, but that's what people are going to be thinking. It's not a fair assessment. You're right, but that is what people we, are going to be thinking. We did not have any real. Um, we didn't have capital improvements there to get right. counter arguments. We didn't have any of that. Did you? Were you all going to vote on each of your capital yeah, articles? The only, the only other thing I want to add is. Six months ago, did, did we know there were savings from the highway? It says right here, transfer ninety nine thousand from the highway. Maintenance. No, we did not. We didn't. If we didn't know that, no, we did not have a number. We knew that now. We knew that Ron and the Highway Facility Committee have saved the town a huge amount of money, but right? we did not have a number yet that we could make use of. Right. And so that's one. Well, do you think this will have any impact on on how the town votes? The fact that this is money that uh, this is coming from coming yeah. from savings. All, all I've heard about this is just rampant hostility. Well, yeah. I understand. And, uh, just, uh, and I fear for the people's 
Yeah, I, I can't read that. Yeah. But, 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 but uh, you know, I, the, the financing angle is a different trick. I mean, I, you know, we you haven't really talked about that about right. how it's being financed differently. So, what did you know? What, why, why is that decision being made? What is the what is this financing, and why do you think it's the right way to go? Well, it comes from free cash versus stabilization. So, there are two parts that need to be carried with two fairs, right? You know, this is not those two articles, um, Article Ten and Eleven. Um, the, so there's a, a certain amount of money that's left over, um, 450000 that Ron is comfortable can be given back to the town that was saved from the highway facility um, building Yeah, but it project. goes to free cash technically, right? Town, town can transfer it. It's, it's not going to free cash yet. They can yeah. transfer it from this fund mm -hmm. well, because fund. it's not closed out yet. If it were closed out, it would go to free cash. Okay. But instead of closing it out to free cash, they're, you know, because they say you want to use the money for other things Correct. that are related. Correct. Basically. Yes. Right. Or the so, majority of it prepared for all these money. Correct. Yes. I, I went over this with our town account. It should note that on the article. Oh, yes. It's not a two thirds vote. <laughs> no. Correct. No, that's right. Two -thirds vote? It's not a two thirds vote. It's, a, it's a simple majority because it's going from general fund to another general fund account. Mm -hmm. right. It came from stabilization originally. Yeah. Which was a two thirds, but yeah, because it's now in general fund, the town meeting and simple majority can vote to use that money. So this this cash exists. Correct. It wasn't authorized it wasn't, to borrow. Or correct. No. Correct. Correct. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it, it was when it was set aside for the high building the highway facility. So it came in. It came into this account a couple of years back. I want to say 2018, 2019. It was moved to other places. Put into this general fund under the highway budget, and so now that Ron, you know, knows that it, you know a certain amount could be released again, it was like, well, why don't we just use some of this that's sort of left over to buy some capital equipment that's so needed, especially because the shade tree law kind of, you know, our understanding that we were responsible came out of the blue for us, so we hadn't planned ahead for all this. You know, so that was our first attempt at December town meeting to get the chipper, but we were very new to that then. So we don't have a lot of this behind us. And now we have a source of funds. And that applies to Article 10. Rhetorically, 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Rhetorically, rhetorically, blaming it on the shade tree law is, not blaming it, but using the shade tree law as the reason why we need this equipment is rhetorically difficult in the sense that there's a group of people and a bigger group of supporters of those people that wanted us to do the shade tree law. And most of those people are actually persuadable. Um, but if if, they're, if if the figures are being pointed at them as the reason why we need these expensive equipment, then they might not be so persuadable. So well, it's not no, about the people, not, it's about the law. It's not them, it's about the law. <laughs> right, yeah, but, but there's a group of people yeah, that- It's that, on advice of town council. There's a group of people that initially brought the law up and said how come your this town is not complying with it and that's that's the, that's the danger in well now we are because we have the money left over from the project <laughs> 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 thing to play out to say about the money that where this money is coming from if people think that i'm out to screw the town about buying equipment that i don't need and stuff why did we have why did we end up with such a huge Excess yeah. out of that. It's because of the time I spent at that place. Yeah. It didn't get paid a penny for extra to do that. Right. And it's not because I, I'm looking to voice, I pay taxes in this town too. Right. It's, it has nothing to do with that kind of thing. But I don't think that we should pitch this as a way to say thank you. No, no, oh, I mean, no, we, may, we, no. We, no. we may feel that way. I think from what extent. he just said is really pers is really persuasive. And yeah. it's, it's a good reason why he should be in this, uh, you know, to some extent, because only he can make that argument. Um, no, I understand, but I, I, we don't want Ron to be attacked. I don't know. And yeah. I don't, I don't, I think it's, it's one tiny piece of the argument is that we have the money in a fund available that's already been authorized for the maintenance building. We didn't spend it all. So we're proposing that we, and this is just the funding part, but the need part of it is really where I think the justification is. You have to establish the need first and then how you pay for it is the secondary question. And I think we've pretty well covered all the aspects of the need. Yeah. 
and we're pretty clear on, on how we're going to pay for it if it passes. So, I have a question regarding the uh, Governor Haley is talking about Chapter 70 and 90 monies for the town. So you complete the year of the. Is there any, any, any idea of the timing? The new patients just it's, right? Eight of the two budgets. The, 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 um, the people that say that they really know say that she's going to come out with more, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be till the end of April. Um, and cherries. Um, you know, but 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 the house the house budget that they just were the, the joint budget recommendations just are worse than the governor's for us. Like, you know, the so we shouldn't rely on any any thought of having any extra cash in the state in chapter nine. I think I've been told that our meeting is superintendent meeting that there is no money coming extra from the governor's state. Chapter nine. Okay. Um, she wants to know it. She wants to put billions into. Uh, um, uh, capital gains tax cuts and yeah. inheritance tax cuts. Because she's worried about the millionaires tax that was passed and that all the millionaires might move out of state. So we have to give them all their money back. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks, Governor. <laughs> so we need recommendations on yes. this from the committee. Yes, and the last time we discussed this, the committee recommended that we need a vote. We vote. Well, yes, if we can vote now, we should vote to, so by hand. By hand, on article to recommend article, article eleven for the chipper. We need, and box. We, we need the yeas and the nays. I'm a yay. I'm a yay. yay. All right, other five yes. zero. Yes. What's a compact loader, Article 12? <laughs> All right. So, Ron, this is a this is the piece of equipment that's in poor condition that yeah. I took pictures of at yes, the highway trail. It's the one that it's been a problem with people that have pretty much since we've had it. Right. Um, and we had a discussion of how many, what were the lifetime engine hours, which I believe were 1,200. On it now. No, well, that's on the machine. So it has twelve hundred on it now. The, the motor has been replaced in it, and then we had about five hundred dollars. Yep. Um, and this equipment breaks down frequently. Frequently, it's got. It's unusual for a piece of equipment to have the problems that this thing's had. Mm -hmm. It's had uh, sensors that go bad on it. It has uh, oil lines that feed the tracks. Um, that have issues that become major problems in terms of where the old lines are. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I want to do is it, it's, it's the new machine would be a compact load, but it would be a rubber tire that kicks in. Compact load. It's like the one you have now. Did you have something like that now that you plow the road with and stuff? Uh, there are big ones. Oh, well, this, this is, this is, this is, this is compact. Ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What is it? What is a compact loader? It's well, what we have now is a track machine, it's like a skid steer. What I want because of what's available, I yeah. want to go to a small loader, articulating loader, like our big one, only a little one that will take all our attachments that are on that we use on that machine. It, it typically, when I bought it to begin with. I had different thoughts of how that was going to work for us. Mm -hmm. And because we stay on the roadways mostly, I don't really need the use of the tracks. Mm -hmm. oh, that was so, so, Ron, how, how old is the current piece of equipment? When did we purchase that? 2014. 2014. So it's going on, it's going on it's 10 years. years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and yeah. you're talking about buying a new one. Yeah. So yeah. a new piece, new replacement piece. It, it really is a problem. And Ron, did, I remember you saying at our last capital improvement meeting, this is used a lot of other town projects. Oh, yes. So it's a versatile, yes. versatile yes. piece of equipment that is used for a lot of passes over other passes. uses. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yes. Ron, is that piece of equipment you wanted to trade in after yeah. four or five years ago? Yeah. But we could have gotten a good trade in value for it. You warned us that one too small that all of these problems would occur. And the price, the seventy thousand dollars. Seventy. Yeah. yeah. There's a good chance that it will be less than that by the time I get all the numbers back for the trade and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you saying at our last I, meeting. You couldn't do it for tonight. No, no, I remember that, but Ron's going to get additional information and but I'm, I'm going to get a requote, right? No, the, no, the chipper was the requote. Chipper the requote. Is, so is there any trade in value to the current one? Yes. Not not a lot, but not a lot. Um, so this seventy thousand that you have, which is a, obviously a number that will change, it's expected to change. Yeah, yeah. you expect it to go down. So so okay. So the trade in will be subtracted from that number. So it won't it won't definitely won't be seventy anyway. You think it'll be whatever your final number less the trade in. Okay. Okay. Then that's what you should ask for. I know, but we don't have the numbers at the moment. The lower the number, the greater the chance yes. of getting. <laughs> right. We're, we're trying right. to have that. Right. Could we have that for? We need it by Monday, right? Oh no, you need Thursday. to vote on it. Um, Thursday, we're going to vote. We're going to vote on it. But well, if you vote on the seventy, yeah, no, no, that covers you. I covers we it. get it. Yeah, I'm just you know. I know. I, I apologize for not having. I'm yeah. So I mean, that, I could put up to seventy thousand. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's less, kind of less clear. Than, yeah. it. Or you could also say not to exceed. Well, that's yeah. that's the word we use. Yeah, either way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does this have uh, a lot of little attachments? Yeah. And you could get one with tires, but they could still take all the same yeah. attachments. Yeah. The attachments that you already have. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There is. Pricing this out, there is one attachment that I'm trying to get with it. Um, okay. And again, the new versus used discussion, which we have on all of these pieces of equipment. Well, I had done this before, looked, it, looked up the used. Um, one requirement Ron has is that it is a side entry exit. For mm -hmm. safety reasons. Yeah. Loader. Um, there aren't many out there. The ones I could find that were in a reasonable distance were all five years or older. Yeah, so it doesn't um, really gain history. All near Boston. Yeah. And almost the same price as he's asking for now. Wow. Okay. You have to understand with equipment, we municipalities get a huge discount. I think it's like 38 to 10, mm -hmm. depending on the piece of equipment. So it kind of takes that use situation right out of the picture. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least it does in my opinion. And that was the whole point why I was, because I had everything pretty well new except for our grader. And I was trying to shoot for a five year plan mm -hmm. so that the trading values kept us up to, so we weren't spending a lot of money on um, maintenance. And if you buy a used machine, now you put me in the hours where it's at the most vulnerable for maintenance. Right. Okay. And you know, doing doing a um, but you lose productivity on top of the cost of maintenance. Right. I mean, you do a hydraulic oil change in a machine, and you're probably like my loaders and that. You're probably looking at three to four thousand dollars between the oil and filter. You know, and, and the time to do it. So can you go back to? I'm sorry, I missed the part where you said fifty. You said fifty-five thousand is what you think you could get. Is that with the trade-in? Okay, with you, the trade. using. Using the trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Got it. Should I change <clears throat> the wording to say side entry exit compact loader? Will that make a difference? Yeah, okay. because it's part of the part of the argument for new mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll add it, that into the wording. Okay. If you do strong. get if this is approved, how long would it be to you take possession of the new uh, product? So the same thing with the chipper is a year and a half. There's a chance we could have it. In September, October, but it depends on what happens between now and June because they're only allowed a lot of so many. No. Mm -hmm. and, they've so, all, and they've all gotten less this year than they're with their left. Oh, the backups are still there. Yeah. Um, so it could be 
next springtime before we speak. And remember, it's a piece of equipment reaching the end of its useful life. So but it's not going to the condition of it's not going to improve with a lead time of a year and a half. Well, what's a greater useful life in terms of the Ten years is typical for a normal contract. What about engine hours? What about engine hours? Not by year. You'll get that question directly, feedback directly from the town. You know that. Yes. Um, yeah, the engine, well, we already replaced it once. I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's so hard to say now. I mean, typically good maintenance, you don't have issues that would kind of, you know, major issues like that. The problem with the machine is everything's been an issue a little bit from day one. So I don't dare say, you know, how long the replacement engine is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the, the machine doesn't really, it's only got like a little, 1200 hours on it, I think is what it is. Yeah. The meter only says 600 because when they get an older, it will um, somehow be deleted the first section of its life. Oh, yeah, uh, like Phyllis was saying, in front of the figure to, to put not to exceed. Well, all of them are not to exceed. You can't exceed whatever's in the warrant. Oh, got it. So, but that's why I was going to, I was thinking of yeah. adding up to just okay. to get, but even that really, frankly. Yeah, yeah they're, they're meaningless phrases. Yeah. They're meaningless yeah. phrases. Yeah. yeah, as soon as I said, I was like, yeah, that's not going to help. Yeah. Me. You have the numbers, and if it doesn't happen to go on the floor. In the article, you could yeah. put it, you could not you can it amend it absolutely. Yeah. But I would, I would think to be safe, you'd want to put in what we feel now is would cover you because you don't right. want to have less than yeah. you're not sure of 55. Yeah. Are you sure of 59? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that's what I would do at least to reduce it by 5,000. But if you don't get it for a year, will that lower your trade in and raise the price? I think if we sign in an agreement that oh, I, he told me it would lock the price in. But then the price wouldn't go up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to guess that the, anything that I've traded in with this company yeah. has never been an issue with what they traded me when the contract. Yeah. Well, so for town meeting, you'll have the idea of the trade in and all the people are rated in there are useful, like, which we also think is important to have. Because it's required that people are working hard. We have to know that since Captain Do you think people will care that it's a wheel? Vehicle that attract? No, I think it's just going to be because people are closing the lines. I mean, I wonder if we should say that in the in the name. Well, I think when I when I looked at the warrants that with that from the past, I think and even I saw a couple from the highway. I looked at a couple from the highway. Your predecessor, I think the batting average, you want to call it that of. I weigh capital items versus capital items approved. It's like one and three, some between one and two and one and three. Well, that's not the only thing he never got the ticket. No, they kept saying no to trucks to him too. Nothing bad there. Um, but I so yeah. so we're we're already at three. We're going for four and. Uh, you know, it's up to two hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars. Two hundred eighty-nine in the top of the budget year in. Well, oh, and the first two are the money we already have. The money is already not. It's not coming from taxation. Yeah, yeah. this is true, but it However, does. But it does. But it does access next year's cup board. Yes. You could then, um, conceivably pay down some borrowing. It not that it makes any sense, but you could take those funds and. From capital stabilization? Well, you know, no, no, so from the highway. You have to go to free cash. I mean, you can put oh. yeah. 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 some more the pressure account. next year. No, don't do that yeah. because, well, it doesn't but like it. Things will all come up next but, year anyway. Well, I have a rich one day for the next year. I really think maybe Phil or uh, or Chris, maybe you want to make the uh, analysis. If there was a good analysis of because I understand Ron's five-year plan, but I don't think the rest of the world does. But and to me, it reads something like this. And we don't need to go into this in greater detail here. But I think that I mean, all it is is saying that look, if you add up all the maintenance, all the inefficiencies, inconveniences of the used equipment, and you compare it on an annual on an annualized basis, 
to a piece of new equipment, yes, the used is probably going to come out a little less. So we're going to pay, we, we are proposing to spend a little bit more money. And I don't have a, an amount, 15% or 10%. So we have a equipment that is working when we want it to be working because it's newer and it doesn't have the, the unknowns and the vagaries of a, of a six to 10 year old piece of equipment. We're dealing with one to five or six year old pieces of equipment. And I just think that you can put it out there in a, in a way. It's not, yeah, sure, the numbers are knock you over when you look at them, but you got to look at this stuff on an annualized basis with all those indirect costs that result from having an old clunker, if I could call it that. Does that make sense to anyone? Yeah, you? this is a really tough year to do any of that. They're all tough. Yeah, every the reason there's so many pieces of equipment on here is because these were deferred. Yeah, yeah. It's also here. You know, and if you look at the uh, finance committee handbook, it says, you know, capital expense request like this ideally should come from these road. Right. It's in there, written in there. It's best right. practices. And we're not close to that. And new growth is 1.9%. Mm -hmm. And our our budget our budget calls for 4.31, which equates to a one and a half dollar per hundred. Uh, per thousand, uh, per thousand tax increase, tax increase. Yeah. and that's what you know that's that's how people are starting out this meeting and from yeah. my past experience people are going to be spending the rest of the meeting with the thought i can either agree with you or i can put food on my family's table well, we, which is it going to be you can't put food on the table i know but that's, but that's <laughs> you can't get to the grocery store <laughs> um, um, <laughs> no, I, I did this is this. Yeah, it's a total. So you're gonna, if you're going to take, if you think you need to take things out of the warrant, take the things, the first three articles. First three articles, articles. 12. Because they're not my normal operating. Yeah. I mean, the compact loader and the pickup is my top of, I mean, front line stuff that I need. I've always needed them and stuff that and stuff. The other things are things that are getting the reason we're asking for is because of things that are being asked of the highway department. Mm -hmm. And I think you're looking at it wrong by saying that what you just said about the um what you just said about the finance on um, your funding. Yeah. And because it's not it's new new work. Basically, the unfunded mandate. So, if 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 twelve and thirteen really are your, you know, if, if, since twelve and thirteen are the priority of the department, I think maybe with those two ahead of, of ten and eleven, and just be straightforward with people. Yeah, these yeah. two are really super important. Mm -hmm. so they're all super important, that, yeah. but yeah. these two we really need. Yes. Um, yeah. And and try to you know try because the. Uh, you know, if, uh, and people should respond to something like that. It's, so, uh, to be here's, a, here's a question for me: If if twelve and thirteen go to the top because they're high need, then why wouldn't those two items be able to come from the highway maintenance account? Okay, so um, can I say something to that? Yeah, yeah. because that is what our stabilization fund is for. Okay, them items. Mm -hmm. I see. I mean, that's what the I whole see. stabilization is set up for. The other things are things that are getting added to the highway department, and that's why I felt that it was kind of a <laughs> good place to bring the money from. Mm -hmm. I was just, yeah, that was was just a real yeah, simple yeah, thing yeah, in my yeah. head where I'm like, yeah. there's there's cash there. You're going to have fun. <laughs> well, if, if, you know, one of the things I was going to bring up just is if you look at Article 6, so there's $450,000 left in this highway maintenance building. Um, uh, and so there's 139 taken out in the current articles 10 and 11. So 311,000 was potentially earmarked for creating the public safety building office edition. So that would take care of the 450,000 that's in that account. 
Just, just so you know where the, yeah. you know, what yeah. the reason yeah. was for all and, those. And that is the police department was moved there? Was that police, fire, and ambulance, and emergency management. And Frank. the building at 32 Main? The building at 32 Well, we know what happens to that. Well, that's a longer process. We're going to have the Public Buildings Committee is going to have a public forum mm -hmm. on May 25th to explain all of this kind of thinking about the public safety building, what the plans are, then maybe town hall, and then we can talk about well, town offices. So most of the money. Yeah. Yeah. All of it, yeah. Correct. But then the town wouldn't have to borrow or anything. And yeah. a year like this, to be able to get a new public safety, but that's a whole different stuff. The money this year is terribly high, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your Honor, if we change Article 12, the new Article 10 to 60,000, is that going to put you in major jeopardy? The compact loader. If you're thinking of 60, do 59 million. <laughs> For real. There's, that's, that's, there's all kinds of data. That, that's, there's a reason why every retail store you go in does pricing that much. Even 70 for now. Yeah. Worst case scenario is that town meeting where you amend it before it goes. Uh, oh, oh, you, you can amend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, make, you can amend right. it down. Right. 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 The person right. makes the motion, they can amend it at that point. Yep. Here. All right, do you want to vote on Article 12? Yeah, recommendation on Article All right. 12. Capital Conservatives Committee. I say aye. 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 We're going to have another five to zero. Sorry. Yeah. And then we just have Article 13, which is not a pickup truck. Up. It is now a one ton highway maintenance truck. The four dollar short bed. Love truck. Love truck. Oh. No. 13. Love truck. You're not looking at the noise. No, you're not. Yeah, you're looking at your nose from the old version. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. If I had to talk from my nose. <laughs> well, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Try to put it as much as there. Yes, I could. Yeah, this is what we changed it to. We did. Yeah, yeah sorry. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of you, you know that, but this is the one I have issue with, um, as you know. Uh, I totally understand getting a new vehicle, um, having it already custom to the way you need it with the gooseneck toe and the um, hitch on the front for the plow. I just don't, I just, I also, I know Phil agrees that I think we can find a used vehicle, um, even if it's a year or two old, save a bunch of money and then just add the gooseneck to that later. So that's just my opinion. So you just spent $50,000 for a truck, four door truck, half ton gas motor truck for $50,000 and you think you're gonna buy a used so I'll say that Bob came to us for seventy thousand for a new truck, and an additional ten for an uplifting, and we said no. Find a used one. We got a used one for forty with the additional ten for the uplifting. Yeah, Bob's going to cost you seventy five hundred dollars for a new car. A diesel motor in a new truck is twelve thousand plus. Add that to what he just taught and learn for a used truck. With without the uplift? No, no. All right. You're at <laughs> 75 dollars. 75. Plus what you said, 10? 12 for, 12 for the diesel. 75 for the plan. Then and then you got the and you're you're now you're upgrading the truck from a half ton to a one ton. I'm at sixty thousand. Sorry. Yes, sixty. What is what I need to add? Feel better about. <laughs> then you go from half ton to a one ton. Then I don't know what the difference is. I mean, it's pretty big because you're going from a basically a a, a family car to a yeah. um, commercial truck. I definitely don't think we should match Bob's. Because you do need a larger truck. Yeah. I just oh, don't no, think I it's it don't even bother double. buying me a truck if you're gonna buy me a half a ton of No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying used. Yeah. 
So, so I just don't see where the difference is. It's a front line piece of equipment for me. We plow snow with that. Mm -hmm. And you want me to, you want the town to buy somebody else's? Because typically what gets traded in is not a commercial truck that's a year old. They, so you may be big, not, the, 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 for, for me, the thing about trucks in general, about pickup trucks, is that, um, Everybody knows or thinks they know all about pickup trucks. And um, the, the difficulty of asking people um, for their consent for you to buy a new truck when they themselves can't afford to buy a new truck is it, it, it is very, it feels really real to people. And it's, it's a hard thing to ask for. And so what you will get asked about questions like this is, when you say you can't, you say you can't get a used one. Describe all of your efforts to attempt to find a used one that will match it. All of them. Here's the problem, and I don't know how Bob got through this. How did he buy a truck? Oh, because he was under 50000 and he could do three quotes. So if this truck comes in at $60,000 for a used one, we can't, we can't do three quotes. We have to bid it. Then you're at the mercy of whoever is low bidder. Mm -hmm. It becomes a, a bigger issue. What you're asking to do is becoming a bigger issue. So, okay, explain that again. So, you if you have go over fifty thousand dollars, right? You now, by the procurement laws, have to oh, go by the procurement law. Okay, I got it. So, you're telling me we should stay under fifty? <laughs> um, you will ask about the trade in, so we're about the truck. Well, well, well can you authorize? Yeah, can you authorize the vehicle separately from the plow, right? I mean, it's, it's 50,000, you can keep it under 50 for the vehicle. But you did pay 40 for a yeah. um, half ton bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. Hand. I mean, I yeah. personally, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. well, what's the trade in? There is no trade in. The truck is staying with the highway department. Because oh. I donated a truck so that we don't have to run around one of our oh, okay. so this is fair on truck. truck. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I need uh, that truck. Um, so this is the equivalent of like an F350 or something oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's a 3500 yes. one thing yeah. on the year. Yeah. I'm shocked you can get it for 80000 yeah, I mean, the used ones aren't cheap. Yeah. It's typically the only people that are buying them are contractors, yeah. and they don't buy them for one year and trade them. The, the, I know the thing that that um, Fire Chief ran into is that the new ones, the there's only a handful of authorized state approved part of the, the dealer in this area that deal with the state thing. There's other, there's other programs that you you don't have to go through the state bid. There's other other um, bidding, like um, there's source well, which is huge in this country. Actually, that's where the equipment would come from, is through the source well. Um, there's Greater uh, Boston um, Police contract that is available to us. Um, there's all sorts of um, there, like, but then I, I know all the dealers that participate in that program have all ordered hundreds and then got they, none of them even got half the numbers that they ordered on their lot. That that was a huge problem all over in our area that trucks that they thought were coming in six months, a year and a half. And so it's a huge. <laughs> Is there any kind of a, like a fleet procurement program? Because other towns have. Bigger cities go to dealers that have fleet arrangements with manufacturers. And uh, is there any kind of program that we can go through that would give us any kind of shot at a better deal? Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's just what I was talking about. So as well as a pretty big one, mm -hmm. um, Greater Boston Police Association, or uh, mm -hmm. Greater Boston Police Association. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bidding, actually, that's where our big trucks 
So this is um this is like one of your frontline pieces of equipment, right? Yeah. So if 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 you don't have a plow, if the one that you have now breaks, then it's going to take that much longer for the streets to get plowed. So basically, you need this piece of equipment to plow the streets and take care of the streets so that all the other first responders can get through and do their job. Some of the issue is because not all the employees are CDL people, drivers, mm -hmm. and they can't. So they these, this is the equipment that they use. Right. They can't drive the big ones. Right. Yeah. They can't plow with our loaders. Right. Because of the CDL law. Mm -hmm. um, so we're but our hands tied with what we do yeah. with the small equipment. And the truck's going to, if, if we get a new truck, it gives us a backup with the old truck. We're not trading in the other. Yeah. In the we, last three years, I've probably spent close to 10 grand just in emissions in this truck. Okay. Yeah. So can we not, can we not, isn't it less expensive to pay our employees to get? CDL. I, I don't know if they're willing or yeah, probably no. Uh, I just I just been fighting this for what six, seven years trying to find. I mean, we get somebody to move on. There's yeah, too many you know, yeah. the, the private world is anything to do with the CDL. Yeah. I mean the private yeah. world eats us up. Yeah. All day yeah. Long. Would you, higher salary. would you have another piece of equipment they could use if there was one? Or are they already all? No, we wouldn't. She would have an expert. Yeah, because I mean, we could use the load. Oh, gotcha. But you're also taking a $200,000 machine now mm -hmm. and using it for, I mean, you're, you're putting hours on it. Now. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. But no matter how you look at it, you're just compounding issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, my thought is our trucks, we spend 200,000 plus on the CDL trucks. And yes, we do need them. But if we use them as everyday cars, pickups, that's sure. It doesn't life. make any sense at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there any, so your rationale for, for, is there any trade value to the old vehicle? Probably a little bit. A little bit. Okay. I mean, it, it is a piece of fish. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out ways to sort of mitigate this. Yeah. This head. What about repairing this existing truck? What does it mean by way of repairs before the operation? Are there any? Right? Which truck? The existing truck. Long time truck. Ah, long time. Who are you using it right now? All right. I mean, there's. You just talk your way out. I think you just talk yourself to a no. It's not right now. It's just tough. You're talking three hundred thousand dollars. Everything. I mean, so if this truck doesn't get replaced, the truck that I donated to the town, so we're not driving around. We're going to start driving around with big trucks and eat them up so they don't last ten or twelve years because we're using them inappropriately. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand as a town. The finance committee, especially, saying that that's the way this town needs to operate. I'm I'm a little appalled by that. Well, it's not about that. It's about no. That. It is all about that because you're just saying this money's already in stabilization, but it requires two thirds vote and also. When but happens, let's let new capital public. improvement should be financed by new growth and new growth is appalling. That's what's appalling this town this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we kept to that, if we kept to that rule, though, we would never have capital. There would be yeah. no opportunity yeah. to ever purchase yeah, capital. Yeah, but, too. but I just told you that the uh, the first the other three items are an added right yeah. item. You right. can't be using that as capital right for what you just said. Yep, understood. 
Yeah. So sorry, I'm, I'm, it's, it's okay. I'm passionate you... about what I. Sorry. How come? How come the state always uses the bacon contractors that always use the big trucks for for their class instead of like smaller truck like that, like 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 the one ton? Because they're not following the streets, and the state isn't typically money savvy with <laughs> what they do. I mean, they used to follow the ramps with pickups, and they took them all out and made them all big trucks. Now, tell me that that makes any sense. When you've got a big truck that can't see to follow ramp where they're backing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's look what the state does for snow removal. I mean, they dump hundreds of thousands of tons of salt on the road when they don't even, it's not doing anything out there. So you don't use the state as a way for us to compare. <laughs> I mean, because if we had their money, there wouldn't be any. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about my job and it's money. The money is my money too. Well, that's how I look at it. Yes, and I get very I, I'm totally appreciative of your job has become because the stumps of your grow of closer. You've got this major resource juggling job there trying to fit all these pieces in, including a human element. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a tough job. It's probably tougher than it's ever been. And this, the amount of state aid to, to the towns, yeah, to the in particular, has effectively declined. Yes, declined. And it's not, like th that's the worst thing about all this, is that, yeah. you know, he's, he and the Capitol Committee suffers the slings of, yeah. you know, a, a, a public scorn at the when it's well. when it's yeah. the state's fault. Yeah. It really is. Yes. And chapter seven and nine. Yeah. Is it possible to look back, let's say, look back over the last six years, seven years, and total what the expenses have what the capital expenses have been on the in the highway department, not the building, the equipment stuff. And see what they see what that's been on an annual basis, because just my hunch is. And I just know from working in the camp, we put we kept pushing stuff forward and forward. And it's like, you know, that's probably what will happen here, but it and it's it, it does it doesn't really help. That that's a really difficult like statistical and it that, that's that takes time. But I did, for instance, I did this for school spending and 1978 total state spending was um 48% of our school budget. Oh and yeah. and um State aid was forty eight percent. Last year, state aid was not even nineteen percent. Right. And and every year there was just a great no matter a lot of Reagan. Here, every year it just goes down a little bit. Well, it's, Reagan, thing, it's the that. same thing with highway funding. Right. And right. it's like here we are, here we are fighting for scraps. Yep. Every right. town meeting right. when when well, the state just has just left us behind. Yep. Well, you know, you point out the chart that I think yes. Bob put together for town yeah. meeting two years ago, <laughs> which showed the equipment that the capital equipment that highway, you know, had on their schedule to be replaced. And every year, you know, yeah. so a lot of it kept getting yeah. down the road. I don't know, 10 years ago, we used to right. ballpark say, well, put 100,000 in stabilization every right. year. That'll, that'll go towards the capital equipment. And so what is that? It's up to a million dollars in 10 years. Well, you put inflation in there and, you know, that, that million is probably, you know, 1.4, 1.5 today, something like that. And so I just think it would be helpful to look at it in that range. So if, if we were lucky enough to get all this stuff, then next year and the year after, you're not going to see these kind of requests, but you know, you will see something on there. You've got a, you know, you've got major pieces. We got through you know, the hardest part. What's that? We got through the hardest part because we got our three trucks replaced. The big trucks. The big trucks that we held off because when I first took over, they were, it was time for some of them to be replaced. And we held off because of the manufacturer problems. And that was all well known for the finance yeah. of what I was doing. And then so we got the three trucks replaced. So they were kind of out of the way for hopefully 12 years before we have to think about them again. But yeah. well, well, you have the greater than you think last year. That's still 
but you know it might be helpful for the Capital Improvements Committee or to think of the town meeting is what's ahead for fiscal year 25, maybe 26, by the way. Yeah, so it's important because you'll be asked that question. It might be yeah. a good idea to come kind of, Well, when the grader comes into play, that's a huge, yes, yeah. huge the table expense. last year. Yeah. 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 And that's why three hundred thirty thousand because yeah. of the money that for this year, and if, if if you really look at the two items, it's not that big of a dollar amount. I know the pickup and the compact lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're trying because everybody talks about renting, so that's why we put it off. Is because I'm trying to because that's one piece that that probably as long as it. I can get one to rent in the springtime. That is probably one piece of equipment that I won't look to replace. Is the one we got is usable, but it's not, it's getting to the point where it's not something that I want to depend on for my spring. And I'm willing to rent one. We rented one last year, but what I'm finding right now is I can't find any to rent. Um, most of your dealers now don't rent them, rent out graders because of the, there's not a big demand for having a rental grader. So, just to keep this moving, should we yeah, add we should vote on this? Yeah. Ron, can I, if, 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 if what happens is what you guys are projecting is going to happen, is people are going to, somebody's going to stand up and oh, I want to make an amendment to make this a, a used truck. But what what would the price be for a used truck that has all this other detail? Uh, we were just looking it's at it. Does not look good. I was just looking, and I couldn't. Yeah. It looks like sixty know, to sixty-five. If, if you're willing, willing to buy a gas yeah. truck, not diesel, yeah. then the price goes down. But yeah. right, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you said that in the meeting last week too, and I don't argue. Um, but. I mean, for first off, in a snowstorm, I mean, what are we going to put another pump uh, tank in? We go through that hassle of having a uh, store on gasoline. We need plus the economy with our gas versus diesel for what we do. I mean, we'd be getting about two miles per gallon. But, but so if somebody stands up and makes this amendment, yeah. You know, so we'll we'll say the same thing. To get used is going to be almost the exact same price. Same price. Yeah. yeah don't, okay. Don't free up yeah. in your presentation, right? I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Touch on all of this stuff. A lot of what we're talking about tonight is going to be in the presentation. It's going to get handed out. It's going to be available for pre-town meeting, and it will be on the town website, and it will be handed out at town meeting, and it'll. All, all the points that we've discussed will be part of the argument as to somebody will still stand up and yeah they will well, I can't but, but I don't know what say you can't say right, you know, right. they as can, we pointed out in our presentation they can, <laughs> people can stand up and say whatever they want you know Hopefully. and they do and I, I think a really and they will. nice thought experiment we can try with people is if you had the opportunity to buy something new at a 30 to 40 percent discount or something used at then, full price, yeah, used, you know, that's like it's a really different, yeah, it is. Kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a good reframing, yeah. I'm not okay. saying we did that kind of just on the not on the pickup, but on the, on the, well, the other equipment, yeah. Do you know All what right. do you get on the pickup? Generally? I have no idea what they, you know, that's something that depends on the I guess at the moment when you, yeah, <laughs> go to, you know, talk to the viewers, yeah. yeah. But there is a pickup. There is a commercial, I mean, a um, municipal discount. All right, so we need to vote. Okay. Cap and crew has. So this is the uh, number 13. And number 13. Yes or no? Yes or no? Well, I say yes. 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 Better. Good luck to you, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Another five to zero? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for a lively discussion. So, oh, you ain't seen nothing. Hey, Ron, 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 Ron,
So your committee's kind of done until. Aye. 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 So your committee's kind of done until. Yeah. Well, we have to work on the presentation. Yeah. yeah. But you're, yeah. If you want to select board or spend time with the state in advance, happy to do that. It's going to be a lot of what we've discussed here. Yeah. Just um, historically at the three town meeting, these things would always get picked as one of the two or three topics. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah I know. So we're yeah. having our next capital um, so committee it? meeting on the 27th of March. I mean, 27th of April. I can have this, I can have a, the present. I'm going to do it. It's going to be a PowerPoint. I can have it ready when you, for your next select board meeting, what, next Monday? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a question. Well, we actually are probably going to. We we just spent an hour, yes. more than an hour and a half, an hour, actually hour and forty five minutes on three or four articles. Mm -hmm. There's thirty seven articles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of them has like many, many, many components. Mm -hmm. Article two. Yeah. Like the idea that we can all do this next week is like not. Would you practical. prefer the capital improvements and not present this PowerPoint presentation to you next week, so you could go through other articles? Um, Following yeah, week? I don't think yeah. I don't think yeah. you're gonna yeah. have time. Like, the wait, warrant has got to get wait, signed by the certain. Oh, I see. Yeah, like maybe wait till closer to the time. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's fine. But but I, I and I'm told I'm told that we tried to that, that the date for circulated, but your committee was unavailable. Yeah, there were certain people. I didn't even right. send it out in the blast because certain people said, "Nope, I'm out of town." People it was because because like historically we've always had that at, at extra me, especially like the on next a Saturday couple of weeks because oh. because like. We, and I, I remember once meeting with finance committee in like a six hour meeting and something yeah, like no. that. It's yeah, like, yeah. like, well, like that was the 29th yeah. but, Saturday. But like we got to talk about these things. Yeah. Well, like, we're meeting this Thursday. The 29th is a Saturday. That was, yeah. that was the date that you had floated. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, I'm not available on that. Um, yeah. And that's the only, I mean, Unless we did some, oh well. Well, yeah, it depends if you did it during the evening. I might be able to do it, but I'm I'm out of pocket all day. Well, do we want to see if we can do finance and select board on an evening yeah. weekend? That's yeah. I, mean, I just yeah. yeah. I have no social life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're meeting this uh, Thursday. You're right here. You're right here. Social life. Yeah. You're meeting this Thursday to vote your your. Recommendations yes. on the finance. Yeah, I'm going to. So, the order that we have this uh, article numbers, they're going to be the same. Yeah, no, there shouldn't be any change in the oh, article. Good. All right. Except for the four, we, 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 we reordered them put, tonight. Yeah. yeah. We number 10 through 13. We'll make a note of that. Just so there's no confusion. No, I'll send, I'll send out another copy oh, to you, you. So you can vote it. Right. Yeah, but there won't be any. Well, I think I, I make a motion to adjourn the meetings. Well, did you, did you want to yeah. try the schedule? Yeah, we should try the schedule. Yeah. yeah try, um, well, so, the schedule, are, you, are you making a motion? I'll second the motion. Yeah, I make a motion to adjourn, and we also, and then we can, we, then we can work on the schedule. Work on the schedule. You hear a second? I did. All right, we approved. That's it. <laughs> all right, thank you. For uh, all right, now in terms of another date, let's break out the uh, the iPhone, my smartphone, I need the question. I mean, I'm, I'm flexible. Well, you, so you're talking about the evening of April 29th? Well, that's the one that is floated, but are there other dates that would work? Because, you know, I mean, other evenings are fine. We just pick the one that one day where I have to be obligated. It's a, you, have, you, you actually do. You have to be like, you have to be like, you have to be Friday the 21st. So two, three days from now. But I, I will be in Boston. You'll be, uh, see, I knew there were some, yeah, like, yeah, yeah people who were in what, and out. So, so, what's, what day, what days are Chris? Do you yeah, know? yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, or so. You want to check with someone first. It was, it's really only that, it's really only the end of this week that I'm obligated. Roy is not in town. I have to just Friday for two weeks. Oh, back on the 12th. That's May 12th. That doesn't yeah. count. Yeah. No, nope. might as well be 2029. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think his appointment expires before then. <laughs> um, 
So you, are you, Chris, are you around on Saturday? I mean, the 20... Yes, I will be 22nd? Yes. I should right. be here on Saturday. Are you available the 22nd? I'm going to have to come. But very little. Yeah. Um, I, I cannot have a funeral that day. Uh, oh, no. <clears throat> but... Yeah, don't. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Warren. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday. It's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday's good for me. I could do Sunday the 23rd. Is that what you mean? Yeah. How about you, Rihanna? Because we need to pick yeah, people. Yeah, Sunday is better for me. Sunday is better? Better because we have a Friday and okay. Friday is Okay, okay. Yeah, Sunday Friday, Friday and Saturday are out. Sunday is Sunday is great. So you want to meet, you still want to meet this coming Thursday evening? Or does it make sense just to meet on Sunday? Uh, I we can't do any Thursday. It's too late to notice it. No, you can't. No, but we're just going to turn up. Should, we're only going to meet to vote on the Warren articles. We're going to be voting jointly with the select. So the point is to vote jointly with the select board on the 24th. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to, just to discuss them more thoroughly, we haven't oh. discussed them at all. We haven't discussed Article 2. Yeah. We haven't, like, oh, we got to yeah. go through. Well, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but uh, yeah, I think yeah. you know, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we discussed these warrant articles pretty thoroughly tonight, yeah. so we should at least get a vote yeah. on those. So we should meet Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a short meeting, but yeah, hopefully, yeah, so it'll be short. Hopefully, oh. <laughs> no, I mean, you could have these four articles that we discussed, and, and then we don't have to we don't have to touch yeah. them on yeah. Sunday because then you guys will vote on them yourselves. Yeah. Right. And uh, okay. we can just talk about the stuff that we, we all yeah. know. Yeah, talk about the big picture. Yeah. So yeah. what time on the 23rd? Yeah, I'm yeah, flexible too. I, and I prefer earlier is better for me, so. Uh, me too, I'm open all day. So whatever works for you guys. 30, I, I was gonna say 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah. All right, 10 o'clock. Oh, you know what? Um, let me just make sure that, well, mm -hmm. if this room's unavailable, we can always meet at the. We can kick somebody out. We, we can kick somebody out. I'm okay to do that. I was just going to look at the calendar. So, anyway. So, it's going to be a. All right. So, 23rd at 10 o'clock. All right. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 10 o'clock on Sunday. No, we just do it. Oh, oh perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. She'll send it back. Is yeah. that town office? Um, no, we no we'll be here. We'll be here. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Hey, you for having me. Are you going to have like four hours for this? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to depress anybody, but. <laughs> no, I mean, that. it depends. It's a, uh, all right. I'll, I'll this, this, this usually these these are always the longest ones, but yeah. um, so it's a potluck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's definitely tap room afterward. Yeah. <laughs> start with donuts. We start with donuts, and then with beer. <laughs> it, it really. <laughs> okay, so really, it's like not pee. That's since not we're that still recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, 23rd, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday meeting. Sunday. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to well, do tonight? Do we have to do anything tonight? Else, there's the. Do we, do we need nope. to do nope. the ARPA vote? No. Nope. Yeah. Um, you table the ARPA vote. Uh, yeah. the to table the vote the next time. Um, Table the mail call till next time. Save your handouts for the next time, and yeah. so we don't have to we, reprint them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> and we have the next, the next regularly scheduled select for meeting is Monday, April twenty fourth at six p.m. But oh. as you, we're also going to do a special edition to a select for meeting no. Sunday, April twenty third at ten a.m. here in the room. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, we can post it tomorrow, but it will also just be uh, warrants and budget and cola, which we haven't discussed yet. <laughs> so, with that, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second, and uh, all in favor, aye, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Everybody.